In this problem, an engineer is trying to determine the maximum speed at which a vehicle will travel around the curve without skidding. She knows the coefficient of friction between the wheels and the road is 0.75 when the road is dry and 0.35 when the road is wet. She knows that the mass of the vehicle does not matter, but she completes her calculations for an 800 kilogram car. Answer the questions for the case when the car is traveling at the maximum speed that will allow it to navigate the curve, whether the pavement is wet or dry. All right, so in this problem, it's like we're trying to set the speed limit for the road. We want the, sa the speed limit to be safe when the road is wet or the road is dry. So we should figure out the speed limit under the most dangerous conditions, because then it'll also work under the less dangerous conditions. So she should perform the calculations when the road is wet. Because if it works when it wet, it's wet, it'll work when it's dry as well. Alright, let's start by listing everything that we'll need to calculate for this problem. So we know we'll need the centripetal net force, mass, centripetal acceleration, velocity, and radius. Alright, I also see that I have one more given over here. Alright, since we are performing the calculations when the road is wet, we have this coefficient of 0.35. I'm going to write that down. So I'm going to write mu equals 0.35. 800 kilograms is the mass of the car. So let's go ahead and write that down as the mass. And this distance from the outside of the curve to the center of the curve, that is our radius of curvature. All right, next we're going to draw the forces acting on the car. So from the back view, I can't see anything acting into the screen or out of the screen. So no forward friction, backwards friction, or drag. But I can draw the weight straight down and the normal force up due to the contact with the road. This car is making a right turn, so I need, know I need a force to the right, and that force is going to be turning friction, as we discussed in another video. All right, so if I have my mass, I can also find my weight. So the weight will be 8,000 newtons. The weight and the normal force balance in this case, because the ground is flat and so the normal force will also be 8,000 newtons. To get my turning friction, I'm going to multiply the coefficient of friction times the normal force, and that will give me a turning friction of 8,000 times 0.35, or 2,800 newtons. That's my only force that doesn't balance, so I know it has to be the net force. Also, centripetal net force means force acting towards the center. So the centripetal net force will just be the turning friction, which equal 2,800 newtons. To get my acceleration, I can rearrange Newton's second law. So AC equals F net C divided by M, or 2,800 divided by 800, which gives me 3.5 meters per second squared our velocity. So let me go ahead and do some math off to the side here. I'm going to use my AC equals V squared over R, so my centripetal acceleration equation. If I multiply both sides by R, then these R's will cancel. Taking the square root, I get velocity equals the square root of AC times R. So plugging in the square root of AC times R, I'll type square root of 3.5 times my radius of curvature, which is 300 meters, and I'll get 32.4 meters per second for my velocity. All right, so in this case, the centripetal acceleration, filling out my answers on the left, was 3.5 meters per second squared, and my velocity was 32.4 meters per second. It also wants us to answer in miles per hour. So let me go ahead and get some space to do a conversion right here. All right, so 32.4 meters per second. Now we need a double conversion box. And I know that there are 1,609 meters in one mile. And 
60 times 60 is 3600 or 3600 seconds in an hour. Multiplying across the top, 32.4 times 3600, dividing on the bottom, I get 72.5 miles per hour. It said, could vehicles obeying a, six, a speed limit of 65 miles per hour navigate the curve on wet or dry pavement? Well, we know that the cars can safely navigate the curve at 72.5 miles per hour, so anything lower than this should be safe. So my correct answer is yes. All right, let's take a look at another kind of problem. So an 800 kilogram car again is driving around the curve shown with a constant speed of 23 meters per second. The car is experiencing an 800 newton drag and a 70 newton backwards friction. All right, so in this problem, I have the top view of my car. So I'm going to draw a forward friction to the north backwards friction and drag, both acting backwards to the south. Since the car is making a right turn right here, I know I need a force towards the center of the circle. And again, that's going to be turning friction. All right, in this problem, I have, it asked me to for tangential acceleration as well as centripetal acceleration. So I'm going to break this problem up into two parts and write out Newton's second law twice for each one separately. So once for tangential, and once for centripetal. So in each case, I'm going to write down F net, M, and A. F net, M, and A. All right, so in 800 kilograms is my mass, which applies to both the turning and the changing speed. I can write the 800 newtons of drag, backwards friction of 70 newtons. And there's one more given over here, 320 newtons, is my radius of curvature, which will affect the centripetal acceleration. So my radius over underneath AC, I should write V and R, and my radius is 320 meters. And I had this constant speed of 23 meters per second is my velocity. Let me also highlight a key word, constant speed. Since the speed is constant, that means my tangential acceleration, which has to do with the changing speed. So this affects the speed. This affects the turning. Since the speed is constant, my tangential acceleration is zero and my, my tangential net force is also zero. Or in other words, the forces in front and behind the object. So let me do a little highlighting here. So for tangential, we're looking at these forces here. And this tells me that these forces have to balance. So my forward friction is going to be 870 newtons. For centripetal, that's talking about the forces acting inside or outside of the curve. So that's my turning friction which I'll do the calculations over here. So before I get my net force, I get my acceleration by doing AC equals V squared over R. So plugging in 23 squared divided by 320, I get 1.65. Not bad. I wrote that in the wrong spot. So as my centripetal acceleration was 1.65 meters per second squared. I can then multiply that by 800. So Newton's second law, net, net force equals mass times acceleration, and get 13.22 Newtons. Since I have no force outside of the circle, then my turning friction is my net centripetal force. So 1,322 newtons right here. All right, now it's just time to answer the questions on the left side. 
we had four forces in the plane because we couldn't draw weight or normal force. The forces are not balanced. Even though the problem says constant speed, the forces are not balanced because of that turning friction. Anytime we're moving in a curve, forces are not balanced. The car's tangential acceleration and tangential net force were zero. We'll fill out the units anyways. Forward friction was 870 newtons. The car's centripetal acceleration was 1.65 meters per second squared. Centripetal net force was 1,322 newtons and that centripetal net force was also the same as my turning friction.